here with Concordia head women's basketball coach Drew Olson to preview the 2016-17 season. Uh, first, we take a, a quick look back at last year. You had uh, to move on, obviously, with a lot of, uh, without a lot of your key players from that national runner-up team, and then you have the the injury about middle of the season to Mary Janovich. Uh, when you consider all of those things, uh, you had to be. Uh, uh, feel like there's a lot of positivity and able to reach the national tournament and you have a lot of those players coming back. Yeah, I was really proud of our team. Uh, felt like we kind of had to find our new identity after that national runner-up team. Um, and we did that. We were ranked fourth and then Mary, Mary goes down with a knee injury and it was like we had to find our, our team all over again mid-season and, and that wasn't easy to do but uh, our, our, our kids found a way. Quinn Rogge really stepped up. Uh, we won some pretty key games to, to get us to the national tournament. And, and so I was really proud of them for that. And I, I thought we, we showed well at the national tournament. We had a chance to, to beat Goshen at the end. And uh, it's a team that ended up going to the final four. So. And take a look at this senior class. First of all, it's not necessarily a, a bunch of star players, but they'll all have, a lot of them will have roles on, on this team. Uh, what can you say about the development of that group and, and what their contributions will mean uh, towards the success of this year's team? Yeah, I, I love those six. Um, they're, they're kids that, like you said, they're, they're not stars, but, but they just keep grinding, keep finding ways to, to get into the lineup. And, um, you know, Shelby, Quinn, Laurel Crone, Devin Edwards, they're, they're three tough kids that uh, they, they just find ways to win and they battle every single day. Erin um, Wieselmeyer, I'm so proud of her for her development, playing JV for two years. Uh, last year was her first time on varsity and, and she really uh, kept getting better and better as the season went on and she stepped up uh, late in that national tournament. Um, Aubrey Bro and, and Krista Goots are, are kids that can really kind of give us sparks off the bench. Aubrey's phenomenal shooter and, and Goots just brings a crazy energy. So uh, all six are definitely going to help us throughout the year. And Shelby Quinn was someone who stepped into a pretty big role last year. Uh, how comforting is it to know kind of what you're going to have with her? And, you know, it's not, uh, you know what you're going to get from game to game with her at, at point guard. Yeah, Shelby's a rock. She can fill in anywhere. Uh, you know, we've, we've played her basically one through four, even though she's only 5'5", five five, but um, she just, she can plug in anywhere, and she's somebody that, that is reliable, that, that you know what you're going to get, and and yeah, at point guard, you know, she's, she's going to continue to, to take care of the basketball, shoot a lot of threes, and uh, hopefully create for others. And after Mary did go down, that's when Quinn Rogge, it seemed like, really took off and, and had a lot of dominant games down the stretch, was the CIT MVP and played really well at the national tournament as well. Uh, we saw how good she was as a freshman. Where is she at right now in comparison to that? She's even better. Um, and, and the thing with Quinn is she she still doesn't know how good she can actually be. Um, you know, we expect a lot out of her this season, and uh, she she's getting better every single day. But I think it's just more of her confidence. She's realizing what she's capable of and uh, the more aggressive she gets, the, the better she's going to be. So, yeah, we're, we're expecting a lot of things out of her. And it says something about the respect that Mary has within the conference that, that she could miss a, a fairly significant number of games and still be voted second team all-conference. So, what did last year tell you about how crucial it is, though, to actually have her on the floor? Well, I, I knew how crucial it was. I mean, she she makes us uh, able to press so much better. She she's probably one of our best passers, and I think that was something that a lot of people didn't really understand was when she went down. Yes, we weren't able to press, but our three point percentage went down just because we we didn't have that extra passer to to get Sydney Feller and Brantley Dom, uh, Aubrey Bro, good looks. And, and that made a huge impact on our offense um, that, that maybe people didn't really realize. But uh, Mary looks awesome right now. She, you know, I, I was kind of worried that maybe she wouldn't be 100%, but, but she looks amazing. So um, yeah, we're, we're really excited to have her back. 
another guard, Danny Anderson, is uh, an intriguing story for what she's gone through and, and being a transfer within the conference. Uh, what does she bring to this team? Uh, Danny brings first her shooting. Uh, she's a phenomenal shooter. She's somebody that, that can kind of go off for big numbers in, in some games. Um, but the other thing that I think Danny brings is that when you have to set out a full season, you have a different outlook. And I think Danny has that. It, it's, it's a confidence. It's a kind of refreshing. And, and she knows why she's playing. I think other people kind of feed off that. Um, I think she's going to be a phenomenal point guard for us this year and, and give us a little bit more scoring than we've had in the past. And I, I know you expect this freshman class to contribute a lot. Uh, what have you seen from them in practice that, that makes you really excited about what they uh, can bring for this team? It's, it's an awesome class, um, and top to bottom. I, I'm just so impressed with that group. They're, they're always the last ones to leave practice, and, and that says something to me that uh, they're all getting in extra shots when practice is done. Uh, Philly, Philly Lammers right now is, is just a beast inside. She gives us more scoring threat. Uh, and, and defensive defensive energy inside. So I think she definitely is going to help us. Maggie Goltz and Colby Duval are, are kids that are going to help us in, in some ways. Uh, all three of them still make some freshman mistakes, but they're going to get there. Um, you know, Maggie is, is a 6'1", great shooter, can create and can do some things that, that most people her size can't do. And, and Colby's a uh, great defender, great energy person, and, and a good leader. She, she talks a lot, so it's good. Um, Conference-wise, the, the GPAC got six teams into the national tournament last year. Is there any reason to expect any kind of drop-off? I mean, how do you assess the, the league going into this year? Uh, it, it's always hard to tell at this point in the year. Like, the preseason rankings are, are kind of a toss-up to me just because I don't always know some of the teams that, some of the players that the North teams got. Um, so I don't really know. I know that you know, Morningside and Briarcliff and Dakota Westland are going to be really good. I know Northwestern was really young, so I expect them to be even better. Um, you know, Hastings is kind of intriguing because they lost a lot too, but I know the, the incoming class that they brought in is, is pretty solid. So it, it's going to be a typical GPAC, really competitive and uh, a grind throughout the year. You've got a, a challenging non-conference schedule again. When you're putting that schedule together, uh, how much do you think about national tournament and kind of what you need to do to, to have that resume for the tournament? Yeah, I think building your schedule is kind of a, a thing that coaches have to do intelligently with, with knowing the team that you have coming in and also knowing what that's going to factor into the national polls. Um, so we want to make sure we, we get some some tough teams on the schedule to prepare our team um, and maybe give us a chance to kind of move up in the rankings. And, and we, we have that this year. I think this is probably one of the toughest non-conference non schedules we've had. Uh, opening up with Marion, who's the defending national champs. Uh, we've got College of the Ozarks and Indiana Tech at, at the Hawaii tournament. Um, our Cal Classic is tough with some KCAC teams, Oklahoma Wesleyan and Friends. So, you know, it's not going to be easy, but I think that's good for our team. We're, we're a team that is is mature. We're, we're confident. I think we can handle it, um, and I think it's going to prepare us for the GPAC season. Last year's, in some ways, you had to, to start over a lot to, with a lot of new players. How much farther along do you think you are from this point a year ago? Uh, night and day. I mean, we're, we're way farther than we were last year. Like I said, we were trying to find our identity. Uh, after losing so many key players. Um, and now this year, since we have so many returning, we've got 11 returning varsity kids. Um, it, there, there's no transition. It's, it's just we're, we're ready, to, ready to go this season and just kind of adding the freshmen into the mix just helps us that even more. You have some more uh, changes on your coaching staff. Uh, that Taylor Purdy Corral is, is with you now on a full-time basis, and a new graduate assistant and uh, Alexis Aiken Otico. I know you would have liked to have Coach Cole around, but uh, what do those two uh, coaches provide your staff? Those two are awesome. Uh, they're they're giving great energy. Uh, they're great for our post players. Both of them are, are really knowledgeable with with things inside and 
Um, Taylor's Taylor's great defensively, so she's she's kind of looking at the defensive end while I usually have my eye on the offensive end. Um, but but they're they're great people that, that work really hard and, and they love our kids. So. And lastly, the, the team really stepped up social media-wise this offseason. Uh, different posts about their accountability partners, I believe, and, and I think Taryn Schutte really stole Twitter. Uh, how much fun does this team have uh, with stuff like that, and is that maybe a good reflection of, of what the chemistry is like on this team? Yeah, absolutely, and, and that's another thing that, that Taylor has been great at. Um, I just kind of handed over all the social media stuff to her, and um, she's doing a great job with it. But again, it goes back to our players. Uh, they're they're awesome. They're fun to be around. They they love each other, and and it shows in those videos. And yes, Taryn is is a unique individual that is stealing social media right now, and it's awesome. So yeah, we love having her.